All right, well, we were just at a cliffhanger <coughs> wherein Pooh dropped his stone, there was a loud splash, and Eeyore disappeared. It was an anxious moment for the watchers on the bridge. They looked and looked, and even the sight of Piglet's stick coming out a little in front of rabbits didn't cheer them up as much as you would have expected. And then, just as Pooh was beginning to think that he must have chosen the wrong stone or the wrong river or the wrong day for his idea, Something grey showed up for a moment by the riverbank, and it got slowly bigger and bigger, and at last it was Eeyore coming out. With a short sh with a shout, they rushed off the bridge, and pushed and pulled him, and soon he was standing among them on dry land. Oh, Eeyore, you are wet, said Piglet, feeling him. Eeyore shook himself, and asked somebody to explain to Piglet what happened when you have been inside a river for quite some time. Well done, Pooh, said Rabbit kindly. That was a good idea of ours. What was? asked Eeyore. And here's, I like this. Here's Piglet patting Eeyore, feeling him wet. Hooshing you to the bank like that. Hooshing me? said Eeyore in surprise. Hooshing me? You didn't think I was hoosh, did you? I dived. Pooh dropped a large stone on me, and so not to be struck heavily on the chest, I dived and swam to the bank. You didn't really, whispered Piglet to Pooh, <laughs> so as to comfort him. I didn't think I did, said Pooh anxiously. It's just Eeyore, said Piglet. I thought your idea was a very good idea. Pooh began to feel a little more comfortable, because when you are a very, very little brain, and you think of things, you find sometimes that a thing which seemed very thingish inside you is quite different when it gets out to the open. And there's other people looking at it. And anyhow, Eeyore was in the river, and now he wasn't, so he hadn't done him any harm. How did you fall in? asked Eeyore, asked Rabbit, as he dried him with Tippet's handkerchief. I didn't, said Eeyore. But, but how? I was bounced, said Eeyore. Ooh, said Roo excitedly. Did somebody push you? Somebody bounced me. I was just thinking by the side of the river. Thinking. If any of you know what that means, when I received a loud bounce. Oh, Eeyore, said everybody. Are you sure it didn't slip? asked Rabbit wisely. Of course I slipped. If you're standing on the slippery bank of a river, and somebody bounces you loudly from behind, you slip. What did you think I did? But who did it? asked Rue. Eeyore didn't answer. I expect it was Tigger, said Piglet nervously. But Eeyore, said Pooh, it was a joke or an accident. I mean... I didn't stop to ask, Pooh. Even at the very bottom of the river, I didn't stop to ask myself, Is this a hearty joke or is it a merest accident? I just floated to the surface and said to myself, It's wet, if you know what I mean. And where was Tigger? asked Rabbit. Before Eeyore could answer, there was a loud noise behind him, and through the hedge came Tigger himself. And here's a picture of Tigger, apparently bouncing on Eeyore. Bounce on, bounce. Oh, bounce on, bounce. Hello, everybody, said Tigger cheerfully. Hello, Tigger, said Root. Rabbit became very important suddenly. Tigger, he said solemnly, what happened just now? Just when, said Tigger a little uncomfortably, when you bounced Eeyore into the river. I didn't bounce him. You bounced me, said Eeyore roughly. I didn't really. I had a cough, and I happened to be behind Eeyore. And I said, that's, that's, that's what's written, I, I kid you not. Why, said Rabbit, helping Piglet up and dusting him. It's all right, Piglet. It looks, it took me by surprise, said Piglet nervously. That's what I call bouncing, said Eeyore. Taking people by surprise. Very unpleasant habit. I don't mind Tigger being in the forest, he went on. Because it's a large forest and there's plenty of room to bounce in it. But I don't see why he should come into my little corner of it and bounce there. It isn't as if there was anything very wonderful about my little corner. Of course, for people who like 
cold, wet, ugly bits, it is something rather special. But otherwise, it's just a corner, and if anybody feels bouncy... I didn't bounce, I coughed, said Tigger crossly. Bouncy or coffee, it's all the same at the bottom of a river. Well, said Rabbit, all I can say is... Well, here's Christopher Robin, so he can say it. Christopher Robin came down from the forest to the bridge, feeling all sunny and careless, and just as he... And just as if twice nineteen didn't matter a bit, as it didn't on such a happy afternoon, he thought that if he stood on the bottom of rail of the bridge and leant over and watched the river slipping slowly beneath him, and he would suddenly know everything there was to, to be known, and he would be able to tell Pooh, who was quite unsure, most, you know, quite... Sh was quite sure about some of it. Who wasn't quite sure about some of it. There we go. But when he got to the bridge and saw the only animals there, then he knew there was... It wasn't the kind of afternoon for that, but the other kind, when you wanted to do something. It's like this, Christopher Robin, began Rabbit. Tigger. No, I didn't, said Tigger. Well, anyhow, there I was, said Eeyore. But I don't think he meant to, said Pooh. He is just bouncy, said Piglet, and he can't help it. Try bouncing me, Tigger, said Roo eagerly. I love, I love Roo. Oh. <laughs> Here, Tigger's gonna try me. Piglet, do you think? Yes, yes, said Rabbit. Well, you don't all want to speak at once. The point is, what does Christopher Robin think about all this? All I did was I coughed, said Tigger. He bounced, said Eeyore. Well, I, I sort of boffed, said Tigger. <laughs> Hush, said Rabbit, holding up his paw. What does Christopher Robin think of all this? That's the point. Well, said Christopher Robin, I'm not quite sure what it was all about. I think. Yes, said everybody. I think we ought to play poo sticks. So they did, and Eeyore, who had never played it before, won more times than anybody else. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, and Roo fell in twice, the first time by accident and the second time on purpose, because suddenly he saw Kanga coming from the forest, and he knew he'd have to go to bed anyhow. <laughs> so then Rabbit said he'd go with them, and Tigger and Eeyore went off together because Eeyore wanted to tell Tigger how to win at poo sticks, which you do by letting your stick drop in a twitchy sort of way, if you understand what I mean, Tigger. And Christopher, er, and Christopher Robin and Pooh and Piglet were left on the bridge by themselves. For a long time they looked at the river beneath them saying nothing, and the river said nothing too, for it felt quiet and peaceful on the summer afternoon. Tigger is, all, Tigger is all right, really, said Piglet lazily. Of course he is, said Christopher Robin. Every, everybody is really, said Pooh. That's what I think, said Pooh. But I don't suppose I'm right, he said. Of course you are, said Christopher Robin. And here is a wonderful picture of Christopher Robin looking over the edge into the water. Well, I'm really happy with how that story ended. That was really great. I'm glad that... Oh, that was, I was worried for a while that this thing is sounding a little bit con confrontational. And then it ended wonderfully. That's great. And tomorrow, we'll work on Chapter 17, in which Tigger is unbounced. I wonder what does that. Taking a peek, taking a peek, taking a peek, and no pictures to tell. But I love you, Christy. Oh, excuse me. That was the tuna making an appearance. I love you dearly, Christy. Sleep well, keep going, find a llama, carry on, and I'll talk to you soon. I'm looking forward to your birthday. I love you, Christy. Good night. <gasps>